Good morning, everybody. Thumper Fishing today is April 1st, 2024. Oof, this year's flying by. Well, for all of you all that have uh, been watching my uh, weekly videos, you know that I had a pretty rough week last week. So I ended up taking the end of the week off because my kids at spring break the wife took it off and we did a bunch of stuff as a family so that was really fun and we had recharge and just get after it and then uh over the weekend on easter sunday i hope everybody had a good easter uh my family and i and my sister we went over to volcano bay water park and had a little fun there and soaked up some sun and got some got some of our first sun sunburns of 2024 so uh yeah so today and this week here's the plan so i'm gonna try and knock out all my little errands appointments and things today on monday still i think we might try and go cast that a line but uh yeah, i gotta get my my brakes replaced I'm, i'll take care of that now then i'll make a bunch of phone calls while i'm waiting on that that service and since that's down south, there's a couple of potential fishing spots that I've wanted to check out. So I brought my electric scooter. So maybe we'll go park a few places. These spots, you can't really park anywhere near uh, where the spot is. So I brought my little e-scooter. I figure we'll park in a parking lot somewhere. And I brought some minimal gear, just two rods and a backpack. And we will e-scooter over to a couple spots and see how they are. Maybe they will be some potential spots that we could use in the future. The rest of the week, I plan on taking the kayak out at least twice this coming week, if the weather permits. So that's the plan this week. Maybe we'll get on some fish today. I mean, these spots are, uh, some of them are near Turkey Creek, and I think another creek called Crane Creek, and then another spot's on the Indian River. They are bridges, spillways, and things like that that I have bookmarked that I want to look at. So since we're down south, that's what we're going to do. We're going to scooter around. We're going to look at them. Maybe we'll throw a couple artificials, see if we can't get anything to bite. Uh, they do look fishy, but you know how bridge, you know, when you're fishing those bridge areas, they can be really snag prone or full of people. You just never know. So I want to get a feel for it. Go check it out. So let's get after it. Got to go get my brakes done take care of all those adult responsibilities yes and then hopefully we can get some fishing in afterwards all right guys catch you on the water hopefully well getting the brakes fixed took an hour and a half longer than what they said so we're running way late today but I was able to take care of a lot of stuff that I needed to do this week, phone calls and things of that such in the waiting room. So I'm probably only going to be able to go explore one spot today. So we're near Palm Bay, Florida. Thinking we'll go check out a, a spot near Turkey Creek. Um, I think I'm going to go park at one of the kayak launch points and then I'm going to take my scooter. It's about a mile scooter ride. So yeah, we'll just go check it out. You know, I was looking at the Google Maps, the street view to try and make sure that the spot had no signs and said no trespassing or no fishing. And I didn't see anything like that. So hopefully when we get there, that's not the case. But that's also why I wanted to go there and just check it out today before I, you know, bring the whole arsenal of gear. But I did see someone fishing there once when I was kayaking through, but that doesn't mean anything because we all know I see daily people fishing in areas you're not supposed to and uh, I personally don't do it mostly just because that's my luck I'll fish it and I'll get busted so you know it's just it is what it is so I usually if there's a sign or something like that I won't do it but if I ever see that sign gone or a gate open fair game you know I have an excuse uh, so yeah we're gonna go check it out we're gonna go see what the signage is it's right near the, the sanctuary where you can't bank, shit, uh, bank fish. So that's why I was curious if there's gonna be any signs, but since it's right around that border, I'm thinking it, it might still be allowed because it's not actually in the sanctuary. 
So anyway, we'll find out and I'll let you guys know. All right, catch you over there. All right, well, this is what I'm thinking. Let's fold this up. Of course, there is trashed. some of this stuff. All right, let's try it. Big old tarpon right there. See if we can't get him to eat. Oh, I can see them. Do you guys see them? They're just swirling over there. Let's see if we can. <clears throat> Here's what I've read, and here's to kind of my two cents on the situation with these rolling tarp. And, and uh, of course, you know, take it as you will. I have I have not actually landed a tarpon yet. I have fought a couple, and they've thrown the hook. So 
like I said, I'm not no expert, but you know, I have been fishing my whole life and I have fished for many different fish species. So this would be my guess. And from what I've read as well. Uh, so when you see the tarpon rolling like that, it's not actually a feeding behavior. And I'm sure you guys that have been fishing for tarpon for years, you already know that. So for the first little year I was here, I did not know that. So I thought that was feeding behavior I was looking for. But it is a sign that tarpon do like to hang out in that spot or that they do hold there. So that is a good possibility. Um, so take note when you do see them rolling. But you're, you're not going to be hooking up uh, as much as you think if you do even do hook up uh, is what I found. So, And in this spot particular, what I think is going on is the times that I've kayaked Turkey Creek or like today... You see a lot of traffic, paddleboarders, kayaks, and all that. So tarpon are, from, from what I've been told by other people and from what I've read, is they, uh, they're they sensitive, you know. So a little bit of stressful factors like the kayaksers or the paddleboarders or just traffic or temperature swings or whatever is going to throw them off. And, uh, you know, like where I'm from, the Pacific Northwest, sometimes when we'd fish for steelhead, they'd get something what we would always call lockjaw. And that was just, just, they were too stressed out to even think about feeding. So that's kind of what I think is going on here because when they come up to roll, they're going back down real deep. So they're hanging out deep, I think, because they're stressed and they're trying to get away from all that, that, that craziness. But when tarpon are in uh, lower oxygenated water like that, they go up and they gulp air. And that's what you're seeing. So it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, the bites are going to, you know, that they're feeding. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that now that we know a couple potential spots that they like to hold, because we've seen them, um, you know, rolling over and doing all that kind of stuff. So I'm thinking maybe we should try this spot the next time we have some bad weather, you know, and it's rainy and there's no one out there on the lake or anything like that. And then you want to sneak up on them because uh, most of the guys have told me their best and their biggest tarpon catches have always been sneaking up on them. So I mean, they're, they're not stressed or anything like that. You know, you're sneaking up on them. You know, you want to be really cautious approaching the flats or areas where you see them because once they see you and they get spooked, chances of hooking them is going to be slim. And then, of course, if you get one moving from point A to point B and you happen to have your, you know, your presentation, your lure, your bait or whatever right there, that's also another way to hook up. But if you're trying to fish for groups of them holding in certain areas, um, and there's a lot of traffic you'll find that they just they just not gonna bite I mean you could throw I literally threw everything at these fish and perfect presentations all that and they just not having it so I think that's what it is it's kind of what I call a lockjaw so the next time we have a really bad day and it's raining and we want to get undercover maybe we'll go check out that spot again and hang out underneath the bridge but that's just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts and your experiences with the tarpon and uh, drop it down in the comment. Thanks, guys. Dang, there's some big ones in there. Let's try this new K-Tail by NLBN. Look at this movement. Good movement. All right, let's get this out of there. He's coming right over to me. Anyone, anybody want a new pair of boots?
Dude, he's seriously coming like 15 feet from me. Check out my buddy. He's a good size. Gotcha. Pretty sure he hangs out over here. All right, last cast, promise. Looks like I'm gonna need to bring a trash bag over here and clean this spot up. Let's get out of here, yes. This might be a nice spot on like a rainy day. Unfortunately, only able to explore one spot today. I've got an appointment I gotta run to. But hey, a little fishing's better than nothing. All right, set that. There, do not fall. Let's open this up. drive by a Bass Pro Shop or a Cabela's and not go in. If you can, that's great self-control. But 
on my way out, I, I, I realized Bass Pro Shop was like three miles away, and I said, of course you gotta go in there. Ah, not the best thing to do after you just had to get, you know, work done on your car, because that's never really, getting work done on your car is not the cheapest. But surprisingly, it was cheaper than what I thought it was gonna be. So that was my excuse for going to Bass Pro Shop. So, anyway. All right, so I was just hoping to at least get to one of the spots today and, and everything took a lot longer than expected. So we fished for only about an hour today, but I think that the one spot I did check out is a potential when we're just trying to shore base fish. I have a feeling that there's usually quite a bit of people that can check out that spot. Um, but uh, you know, there was a lot of tarpon rolling in there. So they got lockjaw. jaw. Doesn't matter what you throw at them, bait, plastics, artificials, doesn't matter what uh, presentation, slow, fast, doesn't matter what color, what scent, they just ain't biting. If you guys have any tips or tricks on how to get a, a tarpon to want to bite, definitely let me know. Um, but yeah, I can't seem to get them to bite. But uh, you know what I was thinking as I just picked up at Bass Pro, uh, the Savage Gear Blue Crab Lure because I have seen videos where when the tarpon are like that, uh, some people have hooked up to monster tarpon on the smallest little uh, lures or swim baits that you know you wouldn't expect a giant tarpon to eat, but sometimes you know they have a certain diet or a certain food source that they're probably eating in there already, and that's what they're gonna go for. So if you don't match that, you're gonna already be at a disadvantage. So, I was thinking that uh, maybe those blue crab traps or bleh, blue crab lures might work if you cast that out because it's real deep in a lot of those pockets where those tarpon sit. And I've noticed that because of all the traffic on the water that they're hanging deep and then they'll come up and roll around and then they'll go back down to the bottom. So maybe casting out that crab and just really slowly, you know, working it across the bottom might trigger a bite especially if you spray it with a bunch of you know crab scent or something like that so that's something that I'm actually might try uh, you know the next time we go out there but again apologies for not much fishing content today today uh, I try to do a little bit more fishing than I did of course but uh, I, I wanted just to take care of as much as I could this week so I have a more open time frame to take the kayak out once maybe even twice maybe even three times this week i don't know we're gonna see but i just don't know where i want to take the kayak first you know so we'll look at the weather we'll figure it out but stay tuned for tomorrow probably get the kayak out and see what we can get into so i have a feeling we're gonna have a pretty good week once we get that kayak out there so i appreciate you guys for watching stay tuned tomorrow we should have some kayak action coming up this week and we'll see what kind of spring fishing we can get into anyway everybody Tight lines. Peace.